everyone, this is Neil from Edureka and welcome to this Edureka live session on learning Informatica in 60 minutes. This is the second installment of our business intelligence tool series and in our previous session we had looked at Power BI. Now Informatica is the market's leader when it comes to data management, data integration, data processing, basically anything that deals with data. Now even if you have a 3 hour session on Informatica, we would still not be able to complete it explore it as such. However, post today's session, I'm quite sure most of you would be able to work with Informatica and begin your journey on playing with data through Informatica Power Center. Now, moving forward, let's look at today's agenda to get a better understanding of what we'll be discussing as part of this session. Now, the first thing we'll try to understand is what exactly is business intelligence. Now, Informatica is a tool that provides you a business intelligence based solution. So let's try to understand what is business intelligence first. After that, we'll try to understand what is extract, transform and load because this is a tool that performs this operation. So it's essential that you understand how extract, transform and load works. Moving on from there, we'll talk about Informatica Power Center 10 and then we'll be looking at the various tools associated with Informatica Power Center, starting from Informatica Power Center Administrative Console and the four remaining tools of Informatica would be explored through a demo as part of this session. Now I hope you guys are definitely looking forward to this session and I request you to be a bit patient because this is a long session as such. Now we'll begin with the first topic of today's session that is what exactly is business intelligence. Now business intelligence is one of the biggest buzzwords in today's industry. Everybody wants to know what it does, how it works out. So let's try to understand business intelligence first. Now, business intelligence basically is a group of techniques as well as tools wherein you gather your data from different sources. Once you have your data from different sources, you bring it onto a common platform that is usually a data warehouse. Once I have my data present here, that is all the data from different sources in a common point, then from this data I can perform various analysis and make it quite easy for the end user to understand this. Now, to put it quite simply, let's take it in this way. Let's say your boss comes up to you and tells you, okay, gather the data from all my sales departments and then show me a result or a visualization which tells me how my sales department is performing. Now for that first, what you need to understand is that not all the departments would be using the same kind of application to store their data. So first, what I need to do is that I need to bring the data from all these applications to a common platform. Once I have a hit here, then I can go on to perform my required analysis operation. Now, this is what business intelligence lets you do. Now, again, if you look at the example here, I have my data present in different databases as well as in different files as such. It could be in a SQL Server database, it could be an SAP database, Oracle or any other database as well. It could also be present in an XML file, a workbook, a PDF file, a CSV file and so forth. So I need to extract the data from all these sources, transform it to my requirement and then load it into a data warehouse. So this is what is the process that we are going to follow that is extract, transform and load. Now this is one of the techniques that business intelligence follows and is again one of the most widely used as well. Moving forward, let's try to understand what exactly is extract, transform and load. Now, to be quite straightforward, extract, transform and load basically is a four stage process that happens. In the first stage, you capture the idea of what exactly is present in your source system. Once you've got an idea of the data that is present here, you're going to scrub and clean this data. That is, you're going to take only the required data or the consistent data from the source. Once I've done with this, then I'll move forward and then perform the required transformation on this data. I'll only take the data that meets my requirement ahead. Finally, I'm going to load it ahead into my enterprise data, data warehouse that is. Okay, so here I have the data from all the sources as well as the data that meets my requirement as such. Let's now try to understand what exactly is Informatica Power Center 10. Okay, Informatica is the market's leading data integration tool. Apart from being a data integration tool, it also lets you migrate your data from different data sources. It helps you integrate your application data, the app data that is present in different application, as well as it helps you transform your data as per your requirement as such. Now, talking about the various Informatica Power Center applications, these can be classified into two categories. The first would be an administrative tool. Now, in the administrative tool section, you have mainly two tools present here. You have your repository manager as well as you have your administrative console. 
Now, let me first address the administrative console. As the name suggests, this is basically a console through which you would be performing most of your administrative tasks. Here, you would be working with various services as well as performing operations on your domain. Let's say I have two teams who are working with Informatica Power Center on my org in my organization. That is, Now, each one of them would be referred to as a node and the collection of these nodes together would form my domain. So all the operation from creation, configuration, as well as management of these nodes would be done from my administrative console. Apart from that, there are various services that are associated to each of these applications as well. It could be a repository service or an integration service as well. So the creation, the starting, the stopping, the deletion of these also would be managed on this administrative console itself. Let's say you want to back up your data or you want to restore an existing data as well, then that also can be done from the existing administrative console as well. So again, this is a tool that most Informatica administrators would be playing around with. After that, you have Informatica Power Center Repository Manager. Now, this basically helps you create your various repositories, manage your various folders, as well as the users and groups. Now, again, what is a repository here you need to understand is that it's quite similar to the project folder that you would be creating in your PyCharm or Eclipse as such. So all the work that you will be doing usually is stored in a project. Here, it's referred to as a repository as such. Now, in your development side, you have mainly three tools. You have Informatica Power Center Designer, Workflow Manager, and Workflow Monitor. Your designer helps you mainly create the ETL mappings as such. Basically, what you're going to do is that you're going to define the flow of data from the source to the target definition. In between, any operation that you want would be considered to be a transformation and that would be included as part of your mapping. Now, mappings themselves are not directly executable as such. So for that, you need to create a workflow associated with it. So once you create your workflow, then you can go on to execute your mapping, which will be done in the workflow manager. Now, if you want to see the status of your workflow, you want to manipulate it, you want to start it, stop it, restart it, or even check the status of an executing workflow, you can do that in Informatica Power Center Workflow Monitor as such. Now, again, just remember each of these tools because these are the most essential tools with Informatica Power Center. Now, moving forward, let's look at Informatica Power Center Administrative Console. Now, again, as the name suggests, this is the console where you would be working with, and again, you'd be mainly performing operations like managing various applications, various services, creating new domain objects, configuring your node, and so forth. Now, moving forward, let me connect to my cloud service where I have already configured my Informatica Power Center. Okay, so this is my cloud service on which I have already configured my Informatica Power Center. So always make sure before you're working with Informatica Power Center, the Informatica service is running in the background. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so this is my Informatica Power Center administrative console. So here you can see that the service is presently not running. So I'm going to start this. Okay, and let me log into my administrative console. Again, the reason that I have started the service is because if it's not running in the background, the communication would not take place. Now again, by default, the first page that you would be looking is the manage domain. Now here, basically, you can manage your various services as well as associated applications running here. So let's say if you're running an email service, I'm running a workflow and there and what happens is that after every workflow execute, I need a mail sent to me. So I can configure that here. Apart from that, you have two major associated services in Informatica that you always need to remember. You have your Informatica integration service and you have Informatica repository service. Now, remember how I told you what repository service was? Basically, it's Basically, it's like your project folder. So everything that you're going to be creating in Informatica is going to be stored in a database as well. So repository service is basically the service which collects all the objects that you're creating and stores it in your database. So let's say if you're working with a source, 
that would be considered as an object. Let's say if you're working with a target, that is also considered to be an object. A mapping that you create, also an object. So everything is going to be stored in a database and your repository service is the service that does this. Now, integration service is the most essential service while you're working with Informatica. This is the service that actually does all the work. Now, once you've designed the workflow and the mapping, the integration service is the actual service that takes the data from the sources, performs all the operations that you have specified and finally stores, stores it in your target database as well. So remember these two services because these are the essential service in Informatica. Now, apart from this, let's say if you were configuring your different nodes and services, so you have the option present here. Now, you can see here by default, I have my Informatica integration service, my repository service and license management present here as well. There's also a single node. Now, what I have done here is that I have basically installed my Informatica server and client on the same system so that it's easy for me to show you both the tools as such. But usually what happens is the server is stored on the actual server and usually each system gets the client installed on theirs. Now, there are various things that you can explore here. Let's say if you want to monitor what each one of the people are doing, each one of the nodes, you can do that as well. Or if you want to see, you want to log to refer to as what operations each one has done. Or let's say you want to see who has called for which service. All these can be viewed here. So again, this is something most administrators would be working on with. Now, the final thing that I want to show you here is with respect to the security aspect. Now, since I am a single user, I have not defined the security users or roles here. Now, what you need to understand here is that not everyone would get the same access while you're working in a company. Now, let's say there's a new team who's working on an Informatica product. Usually what happens is it's the team lead who gets the access to the repository manager and the members would usually get access to the client tools. Now, this is mainly because once you make any changes with respect to the repository, it cannot be reverted back. Let's say by mistake, someone actually deletes your repository or let's say the project folder as such, then you cannot recover this. So this is where your users, roles and security features actually come into picture. Okay, now going back to our presentation, I hope you've got a simple understanding of the administrative console as such. Now, the next tool Next tools to explore, we'll explore it through a demo as part of this session. Now, what we're basically trying to do is that we have a retail organization's data and we want to understand our customers better. So I have my product as well as transaction details present on flat files and my customer detail is present in my database. I'm going to load all this data into Informatica Power Center and then I'm going to create process various transformations on this and finally store it into a data warehouse. Future, anytime that I want the data would be present in the data warehouse from which I can create various data visualization. Now, we'll break down this solution into four phases. Now, in our first phase, we'll be using Informatica Power Center Repository Manager. Now, here basically, we're going to create a work folder and ensure that all the sources, transformations, mapping and workflow would be stored here. So let me go back to my remote desktop. Okay, and let me launch the Informatica Power Center Repository Manager. Now, again, if any of you are actually trying, looking to install Informatica, you can check out the link to install Informatica on your system and then begin your journey as well. So again, these are the four tools that you will be working with Informatica Power Center Repository Manager, Designer, Workflow Manager and Workflow Monitor. So let me start with Repository Manager. So this is what my repository manager would look like. So here again, you can configure your various domains and then you can also configure your various repositories. Now it's not necessary that one domain should just have one repository and it's something usually major and usually in major practices, what happens is you have multiple repositories working when there are different teams working on different projects. So each project would be under a specific repository as such. Okay, now I've already configured my repository, so let me just connect to it. Okay, now by default, you would not be seeing any folder present here. So first, let me begin by creating a work folder. So click on create and it's going to ask you a name for the work folder. So for today's session, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to call it live folder. Okay, one thing you need to remember is that in naming convention of Informatica, you cannot use space. Okay, so always remember that white space cannot be used in naming convention. 
okay so i'll just click on okay and a new folder gets created now here there is nothing present as part of this folder because if you go inside there's this configuration folder present here in future when we are going to create the various sources the targets mapping and workflow each one is correspondingly going to get a separate folder as such now again as i told repository manager can be used to check the details with respect to the projects present so let's say you want to search for something that is present in a folder so you can do that as well okay you have the analyze option here wherein you can analyze the various dependencies as well as search for a specific mapping or a source now let's say there's a specific mapping that you have created and you want to use it again but you're not sure where exactly is present so you can search it by a target keyword or let's say you want to search it completely you can do that as well now again this is something that's very important for an informatica administrators and project leaders as such Moving forward, let's look at the second phase of our project. Okay, now here what we need to do is that we need to create a mapping through which we'll be loading our source definition, adding the transformation, creating the target definition, and finally we'll connect them all as part of a mapping. So let me go back to my Informatica repository manager and launch the Informatica Power Center designer. Now there are two ways that I can approach this. I can either go back to my start option and launch Informatica Power Center designer from there or I can actually launch it from here. Now Informatica provides you this option of quickly quick launching of each of its tools. So if I click on the designer option present here, it will automatically launch Informatica Power Center designer. So this is my Informatica Power Center designer. Okay, now I'll just give you a brief overview with respect to how this works. So to your left, you have the navigation panel, wherein you can find the different folders for both sources, targets, cubes, dimensions, transformations. So everything that you get, everything that you create here, as I said, would be considered as an object. And then it would be stored inside these corresponding folders as such. Okay, now the bottom, the bottom pane is for your output. So this is where the output for any operation that you perform would be present. Now coming to the workspace. Now there are mainly five workspace in Informatica Power Center Designer. We'll be mainly working with three as part of this session. The first is Source Analyzer workspace. Here basically any operation that you wish to perform with your source can be done. Okay, so let's say you want to load your source, you want to modify it or make or remove specific rows from a source as well. Every of those options would be done here because moving further you cannot manipulate the source details in any of the other workspaces. Similarly, you have the target designer workspace. So any operation you wish to perform with respect to your target definition also has to be done here. Let's say you want to create a target definition that would be done here or let's say you want to modify an existing target definition again has to be done here as well. The third and the most important workspace is our mapping designer workspace. Okay, so here what happens is this is the place where you're going to create all the mappings and define the data flow. So let's go back to our source and source designer work source analyzer workspace and begin by importing our sources. Okay, now first what I'm going to do is that I'm going to import it from a database. So you just click on the source option present here and click on import from database option. Now once you do that, it is going to specify which connection do you want to specify, use. Okay, now what you need to do is that let's say you have a database present in your system. You need to create a connection object from Informatica to connect to the database. So again, just click on the three dots present here and then you get this option of user DSN. Here press on add and then you can specify which kind of driver it is. Now I have already configured this so I'm not going to reconfigure it as of now. Okay. Now I need to specify the user to this database. And once I click on connect, it's going to give me which tables are visible to this user. Okay, so this is my customer tables. I'm just going to import this. So if I click on OK, it's going to load my customer table. Now, before I move forward here, let me show you the table in my Oracle database. So this is my Oracle database, which I've connected using the SQL developer. Now I want to connect to my HR underscore SRC database. Now here, let me select star. Now 
Now, let me just run this query so that you can get an idea of what kind of data we are working with. So here you have your customer ID, you have the name of the customer, the address, city, country, contact number and their corresponding email. Okay, now there are 10,000 entries in this table as such. So we'll be loading this completely to our Informatica Power Center. Now again, with respect to the capability of Informatica Power Center, it can process thousands of rows in just minutes. Now we'll be seeing how effective and useful it is while we are executing this mapping as well. Okay, so I have loaded my customer data database. Now let me load it from, let me load my product as well as transaction details from a flat file. So let me click on sources and import from file. So I have my customer details. So I don't want this because it's already present in my database. Now again, while you're loading a fi file to Informatica, you can load only a single file. Okay, so what you need to do is that select the single file and then process with the file wizard. Now this is a flat file, basically a comma separated flat file. Now it's a it's using a delimiter rather than a fixed width difference. Now in the first step, what you basically need to do is that ensure which type of fi flat file it is and then ensure that you have clicked import field names from the first line because this helps Informatica understand the headers for the table. Okay, once you've done with this, click on next. Now in the second step, basically you need to specify whether it's using a text qualifier or if it's using a delimiter that is not comma. So you can choose anything present here. Finally, click on next and you'll be reaching the third step. This step basically helps you specify the data type as well as precision associated with respect to each column as such. So again, once you're done with this, just click on finish. Now again, what you need to understand here is that it's not the complete data that gets uploaded here. Okay, this is basically a metadata of the data that is present in your database or the flat file as such. Let me load the third file as well. So we've load our cust loaded our customers, our product. Now we need the transaction details. So again, import from file. So uh, here I've already loaded my three source files. So now let's begin creation of our mapping. So let's go back to the mapping designer workspace. And here, let me bring in all the sources as such. Now here you can see the separation, right? Inside the source folder, there is based on flat file and then there's based on the database. So this is how Informatica differentiates these. Okay, now let me bring in all the sources. Let me bring in the product table. Let me. So first thing I need to do is set the name for my mapping. Now again, by convention, you follow, you start every mapping with a small m followed by the name of the mapping. Again, no white spaces here. So live, m underscore live as such. So click on okay, and we are going to create a mapping. Now, you see when I had only just one source definition, now something new has been added. This is basically a transformation that Informatica automatically creates. Okay, so this transformation is called source qualifier transformation. This gets created whenever you're working with either a relational table or a flat file source. Basically what it does here is that it converts the data types of these relational tables into Informatica supported data types. Okay, I'll just show you the difference here. Okay, just notice here, where my product ID initially was of type number, it has changed to decimal. Now again, this basically helps Informatica integrate your data from different sources and is one of the major factor why Informatica is so effective while working with different data types, different data sources, I'm sorry. Okay, now simultaneously, let me load my transaction details as well. And let me load in my customer tables.
okay it's a very big workspace so i hope you guys can see it so again see the same i had loaded a relational table from my database and i had loaded two flat files so for all of these the source qualifier transformation is created now this is really helpful when you want to process the data before you perform any operations on this let's say there are two tables that are coming from the same database and i want to join them i can do that using the source qualifier transformation without using any other transformation here okay just go inside the source qualifier transformation and you have the option to edit the transformation now once you double click on any transformation you can modify this now if you go into the ports option this tells you the different ports or the column numbers which are associated from the source okay so any operation that you want to change here can also be done now coming to the statement of joining two tables that can be done here okay so let's say i have two tables and i want to specify a join condition with respect to them that is a user defined join so i can just click on this arrow mark and then it will help me specify which column to add now since transaction is a flat file i cannot do that so let me go down to my customer table and just show you an example Okay, so you can see here the user defined join field is open here. So click on this arrow mark and then I can actually choose the port based on which I want to join these tables. Okay, so again, let's say two tables coming from same database based on the condition I specify here, I can join them. Once I've specified the condition, if I click on generate SQL, it will also automatically generate an SQL for the expression that I have specified. For that is the join condition. Okay, so it's really helpful and your work gets cut short to a lot of a huge extent actually. Okay, now again, let's say I don't want all the data to come from my data source. I want to specify a filter condition. You can do that as part of my source filter condition. So here I just specify which data needs to come through and it pro filters this data. Apart from that, if you want to ensure only distinct values come from the source, you can just click on select distinct. So there's a lot of operations that you can perform. And again, as I mentioned, Informatica is a really big pool. So spending even days on this, you would still have not explored it completely. I myself have not completely explored Informatica. So definitely this is something that is quite interesting. Now, what we'll be first doing is that let's try to join our transaction details to our product details. Basically what this will help me understand is the details with respect to the products which are bought in each of the transaction. Okay, now for that we're gonna use our first transformation. Now, again Informatica has close to 38 different transformations as part of it and lot more that keeps coming up. So, which to choose is the first question that you need to understand. Now since I'm gonna join only two transformations, sorry, two data sources, I'm going to use something known as a join transformation. So click on transformation option here and select create option. Once you do that, you get the complete list of transformations that are available here. Now, again, as I said, there are different kinds of transformations present to perform different operations and Informatica will leave you completely puzzled with respect to how it works out. So let's try to explore each one of them in our upcoming sessions. But today, let's start with join a transformation. Okay, now again, let me start name it GNR product underscore transaction. Once I click on create, this transformation gets created. So this is my transformation. I'm done with this. So let me bring it and add it here. Now what I need to do is that I need to connect my source qualifiers to my joiner transformation and it needs to have the corresponding columns also present in it. So for that just click on select all, drag it and drop it into my joiner transformation. This basically does two things. Firstly, it replicates all the columns or ports present in a transformation into my joiner transformation as well as it creates a connectivity between the source qualifier transformation and the joiner transformation that I have just created. Now, only one transformation or one source definition has been linked to my joiner transformation. It's time I link the second one. So again, select all, drag it and drop it. Okay, now I've created a connection between my source to my joiner transformation. But my job is not done here. I need to still specify the condition based on which these data has to get joined. So for that, double click on the joiner transformation and then go to the condition tab here basically it's going to ask you whether you need to take the master or the detail now let's come back to the master and detail a little later let me just click on add a new condition option 
okay now here it is going to give me different columns present here so i have my invoice number stock code description quant so again what I can understand from this is that it is coming from my transaction table so my master refers to my transaction table detail basically is then going to refer to my product table so here what Informatica is doing that is just labeling the two tables as master and detail to help you differentiate between them now usually masters are tables which have just single reference okay let's say I want more detail with respect to a product then I'm going to set the table which has the product ID as the master and the table which has relevantly all the details with respect to product as detail okay so this by default has set it now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to specify the join condition now I'm going to join it based on the product ID so product ID 1 from my transaction table is equal to my product ID so if you go back to the properties table Oh, I'm sorry if you go back to the ports table here you can see the different ports are, that are present so there are 17 ports present here now I don't want all of them to be taken forward so what am I going to do is that I'm going to uncheck the option from input output so you see the I and O present here this is not 1 and 0 guys this is I and O so it basically helps you understand which is an input port which is an output port basically again with respect to a data flow it helps you differentiate between which is an incoming value and which value should go out now in our case let's say I do want the rating nor the seller details let the price stay I'm going to remove department company number sold discount uh, I'm going to keep the invoice number stock code I don't need description quantity invoice date I'm going to keep invoice date unit price okay customer ID yes definitely and I don't want the product ID again so I'm going to uncheck this basically what I have done here is that to my so join a transformation all the ports are inputs but only the select port should go as output now this is what I have ensured by checking these options here okay once I'm done with this just click on apply and okay so till here what I've done is that I have joined the data coming from these two tables based on a condition that the product ID from the product table is equal to the product ID from the transaction table okay now based on this all the data would get joined and sent across from here now again talking about join operations normally in SQL you have four different types of join similarly in the joiner transformation you also you have that so just double click here let me go back to my properties so here you have the join types option okay you can either have a normal join master outer join detail outer join and full outer join basically your left join or right join okay so this is how it has classified it so we're not going to change with respect to now the type of join okay so clearly here I hope you guys find it quite interesting now moving forward I want to join this data that is the details with respect to transaction and product to my customer data okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to create another joiner transformation so again I can either go back to my transformation tab and select joiner or I can select joiner from here so this is basically a shortcut to the different transformations now again you might be wondering why am I using two different joiners to join three tables basically the restriction with the joiner transformation is that you can only join two sources or two inputs from through joiner transformation okay so with the second joiner I'm going to join these two these three tables as such okay so here first I'll bring my customer details select all drag it and drop it similarly let me select everything from here and drag and drop it to my second joint transmission now what you need to understand here is that all the tables that are present here all the columns that are present here how many columns are present here I think there are 17 columns present here let me see in the second joiner transformation if everything comes here now again if you see here there are close to 24 ports now I don't need all of them as part of this so I don't need a duplicate product ID select this let me remove it let me remove you. quantity I don't want description so this basically happens because I have dragged and dropped it let's say I individually select it then this would not happen but again even though these columns are present here they are not selected as output if you'll notice here they are just inputs they are not going as output so it does not make much difference but I don't want data inconsistency to happen here so I'm going to remove all these ports which does not have an output specified 
again the alternative to this manual work is that you manually drag and drop the columns okay okay this is a bit better now i have to basically work with 14 different columns now again let's specify the condition so the condition here add a new condition is always with reference to the customer id so customer id is going to be linked to the customer id of the customer table customer id from our previous join to the customer id of my customer table okay and let me go back let me just check this once again All right, everything seems okay. I'll click on apply and click on okay. So with this, we've almost completed our transformation. Now I basically have the details of the product my customer has purchased with respect to every transaction. So this becomes a highly detailed data. So let's say I want to filter it or group it with respect to the customer details. For that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a new transformation known as aggregation transformation. Now, aggregation transformation basically, as the name suggests, helps you perform various aggregation operations. So here, I'm just going to click on aggregation transformation and then again click in the workspace. So here, I have an aggregation transformation created. To this, I'm going to select all the columns present here and then drop it. So automatically these get replicated here as well as linked. Now inside my aggregator transformation, I have a useful option known as group by. Okay, if you see the last column here is group by. So I want to group by the customer details or the customer ID. Now again, there are two customer IDs here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck this option present here. Okay. Now this ensures that there's only going to be one customer ID and it's going and my data is going to be grouped based on my customer ID as such. So once this is set, I'm going to click on OK. But again, let me show you one interesting thing. Now aggregation transformation can also be used to specify a value to a port or a column as such. So let's say there's a column that is present here to which you want to uh, create a new value. Now, to give you a better example, let's say I have the details of my employees. Now I have their basic pay, I have their HRA, I have their TA, and then I know how much tax has to be cut. So to specify the total amount, what I'll do is I'll just use an aggregation transformation wherein I'll specify the condition based on which the total salary has to be calculated. So for that, there's this option of adding an expression. So let's say how, let me just show you how it's, how you're going to do that. So the moment you uncheck the output option, it basically assumes that this value is going to be, sorry, the moment you uncheck the input option, it basically understands this value is going to be computed. So it, it unlocks the expression column present here. If you click on this arrow option, then you get the expression editor. So here you can specify the expression based on which the value has to be computed. Now, again, if you look at the various functions that are present in aggregator transformation, this is the complete list. Okay. There are a lot of options that you can perform. So again, this is something that you can definitely explore. Apart from this, any expression that you wish to perform, there's also a separate transformation known as expression transformation. So again, there are different ways to approach a problem as such. So for now, let me just cancel this and click on apply. So with this, let me just summarize what we have done till here. We have taken the details of our product. We have taken the details of our transaction and joined them based on the product ID. After that, we bought in the details of the customer. And then we've joined the earlier details with the customer details as well. Finally, I have created an aggregator transformation based on which this data is going to be grouped. Finally, I need to create a target definition. Target definition basically is where my target has to be stored. Now, again, there are two ways to approach this. First, I can begin by creating a target definition from scratch. Now, that's a very tedious work that I have to follow. Rather than that, I'm going to take the second approach. This basically is modeling the target definition based on a transformation I have already created. Now, there are two advantages of this. Firstly, it reduces of my work of designing the structure of my target table. Secondly, it copies all the trans all the columns as well as data types, precisions associated in that transformation. Now, rather than telling this, let me show you how it's done. So if you want to model a target definition based on any transformation, right click the transformation and go to the option of create and add target. Once you click on this, a target definition gets created based on the transformation. 
okay so if you notice here it's almost the same as my aggregated transformation but if you see i had unchecked the option for customer id one so that is not present here now i want to modify this target definition now if you remember i had mentioned you cannot manipulate the source definition or the target definition in any other workspace apart from their respective workspaces so let's say i want to make any changes then i need to go to the target analyzer target designer workspace again for helping you understand let me double click this and if you go to the ports option you cannot modify any of this present here so let me go back to my target des target designer workspace and here let me bring in the target definition so i'll drag this and drop it now first what i'm going to do is that i'm going to begin by renaming this now i don't like the name aggr trans so i'm going to rename it tgt that is for understanding it's a target definition and i'll call it final okay with this click on okay and the target definition gets renamed now by default it has selected as the data database type to be oracle now i don't want it to be an oracle database file i want it to be a flat file then i can change it now there are various different types of database files that you can create now i'm going to choose flat file for this now even when i choose flat file it's going to ask me for more information whether it has to be delimited file or it should be a fixed width file if you click on advanced you have the option of even specifying what the delimiter should be okay so let's say if you want to make any changes with respect to the columns let's say you want to change the name of the column or if you want to set the the column to be key all the operations can be done here so basically this is the workspace where you can modify your target definition so i'm not going to make any changes with respect to this i'll just click on apply click on okay and we have our updated target definition now if you go back to your mapping designer workspace first thing that you need to notice here is that the target definition present here is not updated so let me first delete this and then bring in the updated target definition okay so finally what i need to do is that i need to close this data flow so for that i need to link this aggregator transformation to my target definition again i can either select all and then join it or right click and then i have the option of auto link auto link basically it helps you link two transformations and complete your flow now here it's asking me from which transformation so it should come from my aggregator transformation okay so as you see the name is similar now it is going to ask me to which transformation so it needs to get connected to my tgt final transformation so with this it the next step is basically by defining how the auto link should happen either should it be based on name or based on the position of the ports for now i'm going to keep it as name because they follow the same naming conventions so if i click on auto apply now automatically the link gets created finally when i click on okay i have completed my mapping design okay now this is slightly complicated for me to get a complete view so what i'll do is i'll just right click okay let me just click on the workspace and i'll choose arrange all iconically so this will convert the entire mapping to an iconic representation so i have my customer table i have my product table i have my transaction table product and transaction is going to get joined to a join a transformation then this join data is going to get joined with the customer data so basically i'm performing a double join here once this is done i'm going to pass it to an aggregator transformation through which i'm going to group the data based on my customer details and finally i'm going to store it into my target definition which is a flat file okay now the final step of this is basically to save this operation now once i press control s it is going to save this while this is done basically it also checks if it is a valid transformation valid mapping as such now if you see here there's an operation which has happened so it's trying to validate it now it sees that the data flow is correct but again it finds a inconsistency now in my aggregator transformation customer name has an invalid reference okay so thereby it ensures that my map that by it has notified me that the mapping has become invalid so i need to go back to my aggregator transformation and check it again so this is why informatica is really helpful so even while you're designing a mapping it checks now so this is something that was mistake on my part i had to recheck the input option here because we ha i had shown you the expression option it has considered this to be an invalid thing so again click on apply let me go click on okay and save this 
So now you can see it has considered it to be a valid transformation because I have specified that the value of customer name is going to come as input. Are you clear to here? I hope you guys are understanding. So moving on now is the time that we go to the third phase of our solution. Okay. In phase three, we basically have to create a workflow involving various tasks and components, which will help us execute our mapping. Okay. As I had mentioned, we have basically just defined a flow of the data from the source, what kind of operation has to happen on the data and finally where it has to get stored. Now we actually have to initiate the data flow for that. We need to create a mapping. So let me go back and here launch the third tool as part of today's session that is Informatica Power Center Workflow Manager. Okay, so this is my Informatica Power Center Workflow Manager. Now again, let me just hold on to this one second. I'll just give you a brief overview with respect to the two workspaces that we have missed out here. Now, as you can see, there are different transformations I have created. Now let's say there's a specific transformations I want to use across multiple mappings that I'm going to create. Let's say the same aggregation operation has to be performed on different mappings. It's going to get the same input. It's going to give the same output and the same aggregation operation has to be done. Now, rather than recreating it every time, what I can do is that I can actually make this transformation as a reusable transformation. This will basically ensure the same transformation can be used across different mappings as such. Remember how each of the source definitions gets added in the source folder and the target definition inside the target folder. Similarly, if you make a transformation reusable, it gets added inside the transformation folder. This will make it easy for me to use it again and again. Now let's say there's a series of mapping. Let's say there's a complete mapping that I want to use again and again. Let's say I want to create a basic mapping and then from there branch out for different purposes. Then I can create that, uh, I can call that as a maplet. Again, similar to how you had a reusable mapping, a reusable transformation, you can have a reusable mapping. So the two remaining workspaces, that is the maplet designer workspace basically is used to work with, res with your reusable mapping and the transformation developer workspace is used to work with respect to your reusable transformations. Okay. Now coming back to our workflow manager, this is a workspace where we are going to create our workflow or basically you're going to create a task, which is going to help execute your mapping as such. Okay. Now again, there are three workspaces here. You have your task developer workspace, worklet designer workspace and workflow designer. Now in our session, we're just going to use the workflow designer workspace. Here, let me begin by creating a new workflow. So click on workflow option present here and you have the option of creating a new workflow. Now the naming convention for creating a new workflow is that it should start with WF followed by the name of the mapping M underscore live. Okay. So I'll click on okay. And I have a start icon present here. This basically is helping me understand that my workflow is going to start from here. Now, again, this is something that is useful. This is something that is very useful when you're working with multiple mappings, because when you're working in the industry, you don't just create one single mapping or one single operation as such. You have a lot of data. You have a lot of analysis that you have to do. So for that, you'll be creating multiple mappings and these mappings can themselves be interrelated as well. So this is just a simple understanding for you. But again, in a real time scenario, while you're working with multiple mappings, you're going to create a very big workflow as such. So for today's session, we'll just create a simple workflow. So for cre now for create linking our workflow to a mapping, you need to create a task known as a session task. Okay. Session task basically helps you un helps Informatica understand that this is the mapping that needs to get executed. So click on the session task present here and then again, click on the workspace. Now it is going to ask me which mapping should be associated with this session. So I'm going to select the M underscore live mapping workspace mapping. I'm sorry. So once I do that automatically, a session gets linked. Now, again, this is not complete. I know my workflow is going to start from here. I know this mapping has to get executed. So what there needs to be is that there needs to be a connectivity between these two else. These would not get executed. So select, so drag from start and drop it to session. So this becomes a flow. 
okay now my workflow is going to start and then the following session is going to get executed and in that session the corresponding mapping that we have defined is going to get executed as such now again it's not complete we need to actually specify from which data source the data has to come where my flat file is present and where the output file has to be stored as well so for that you need to go into the session properties for that double click the session icon present here and then go to the mapping option now here you can find the details with respect to your sources as well as your targets and transformations. Now if you click on the products or let me take the customer. Okay. Now here it is going to use a relational reader basically because it's going to read from a relational table and then it is going to use a connection object. Now I've already created a connection object to my database. So in case if you're wondering on how to create a connection object, you can check out our video on Informatica tutorial where I have talked in detail about creating connection objects and working with Informatica Power Center as well. So let me just cancel this. Now there are no changes here, but let's say if you're working with a flat file, by default, Informatica checks in its default path for its so so for these source files as such. Now this is not where the source file is present. If you actually see my source file is present in my downloads folder. Okay, this is where my source file is present. So I have to update this path. So copy this and then paste it here. Okay, so this it will check for my transaction.csv file in this location now. Same I need to do with respect to my product table as well. Now one last thing that I need to do is with respect to my target folder. Now with target file, I'm sorry. So in my target file, there are again two things that I need to write. Firstly, I need to ensure that headers are present in my target file because this is what helps me identify which column is for what purpose. So in my header option, choose as output field names. This basically will set the field names as headers. As well as the second thing that I need to do is that I need to change the extension of that. Okay, by default, what Informatica does is that it creates an output file of the extension .out, but I need it to be .csv because it's a comma separated flat file. So I'm changing it to .csv. Let's say you want to put present this file in a different location. You can specify the location as well. But right now I'm not changing this because I can help you understand where it is going to store this target file as well. So once I click on apply, I'm done setting my session properties. Now again, let's save this workflow. And as you can see, Informatica is validating this as well. So here you can see Informatica has completely checked all the details with respect to my workflow and then given me a valid output. So this is a very good option from Informatica, which checks every step of your process. So every time you save Informatica ensures that you've not made a mistake. Now again, this is on a very high level till here. What I have done is that I've just defined from where my data has to come, what operation should be done on this data and where it has to be stored. Now, there may be still some errors that occur while the actual transfer happens. So for that, you have Informatica's Power Center Workflow Monitor. Now, automatically when you execute this session, Workflow Monitor gets executed. Now to start a workflow, either go to the Workflow tab and select Start Workflow or just right click on the workspace and select Start Workflow. Once you do this, you can automatically see the workflow monitor getting launched. So here you have the details with respect to the session as well as the workflow as such. So you can see here, it has taken just four seconds for the session to execute. Now to get more details with respect to a session, double click on it. And then you have the task details. Apart from that, let's say if you want to see the source target statistics. This is something that is really helpful for you to understand the transfer of the data between the source and the target. Now, if you see here, I had 10,000 rows of my customer, 3000 of my product and 50,000 transaction data. Okay. Now I have loaded all this data. I have performed the required operation. And finally I have 9,945 rows present here. So basically Informatica has processed close to 65,000 rows of data and then converted it to just 9,545 rows in a matter of four seconds. Okay. Informatica is really powerful in process in terms of data processing. This is just one example. Earlier I had processed eight crore rows, eight crore rows, and I had 
performed almost close to 21 transformations. All it took me to get 50,000 rows as output was just mere 11 minutes. So that's how capable Informatica Power Center is. Okay, this is to give you a simple idea. Now again, to see the output file, okay, by default Informatica's target path is going to be your installation folder inside. So inside Informatica 10.1 server info underscore shared and this uh, these are the default path for Informatica. So by default Informatica will check for the source files in Informatica installation folder server info underscore shared and source file and the target files will be created in the same directory with respect to the target files. So this is my target file. Okay, now I do not have a CSV viewer, but this is a rough idea with respect to the target file. Okay, now there are basically 9,000 rows, almost 10,000 rows present here, so I'm not able to show you it completely. Okay, but again, I hope you've got a simple understanding of how it works. Now, again, I'm quite sure post this session, you've got an understanding of each of the Informatica Power Center tools and how they work with each other. What is the role of each of the tools and how you can work with respect to them. So I'm quite sure post this session, um, I, I'm sh my team would be sharing the Informatica installation link as well. So you, ca you can go on and install Informatica on your system and begin exploring your data. Okay, now with this, we've come to the uh, conclusion of this session. You can, just to summarize what we've started off, we started off by understanding what is business intelligence. We talked about extract, transform, and load. Then we talked about Informatica Power Center, and then we saw a demo. Now, for more information on our Informatica certification training, you can check out our page at eureka.co slash Informatica and get the upcoming details with respect to the Informatica courses. We have both weekday and weekend batches. And if you enroll and give us your detail today as a goodwill gesture from our side, we can give you an additional 15% discount. Now, since you've all stayed for this long, I would definitely recommend that you do that. So just given your details here and our team would correspondingly get in touch with you. Now, if you're looking for blogs that can help you, you can check out our edureka.co slash blogs and find all the details with respect to our Informatica blogs. You can check out the interview questions, you can find it more details on the transformation, as well as get an insight with respect to what is Informatica as well. So here's the installation block that is install Informatica in nine easy steps. So with this, you can get started with Informatica on your system itself. Now, finally, if you're looking for more details on Informatica, you can check out our Informatica Power Center playlist, wherein we start about Informatica from scratch. Apart from that, please ensure that you have subscribed and select and notified to our channel to get the latest updates with respect to the Edureka views. So any future events or live sessions we would be creating, any videos that we would be updating, you would definitely be the first to be notified. So with this, we've come to a conclusion. I hope you had a great experience. Thank you and goodbye.